Hello everybody, Clark Dancy here, and today I'm going to give you some general information about cardiovascular exercise. What is it? What exercises fall into this category of exercise? And how can you get the most at your physical activity? To start things off, for those of you who do not know what cardiovascular exercise is, the American College of Sports Medicine defines cardiovascular exercise as exercise that works a variety of muscle groups in in a rhythmic fashion which can be maintained for an extended period of time. This type of exercise taxes the heart and lungs into using oxygen more effectively, which is why cardiovascular exercise also has gone by aerobic exercise, which means with oxygen. To get health benefits from this type of exercise, one would train at intensity between 55 and 85 of their maximum heart rate. The closer one exercises to their maximum heart rate, the greater the physiological benefits to the body's systems. Now that we are off to a good start and you know a little bit about cardiovascular exercise, let's now look at what you can do with the different types of exercises that are available. The great thing about cardiovascular exercise is that there is so much variety that anyone can find some type of exercise to perform and gain serious health benefits. The American College of Sports Medicine has developed three different groups to place the various exercises in. The first group is characterized by exercises that require little to no skill but have a consistent rate of caloric burn. These exercises would include walking, jogging, cycling, things of that nature. Group 2 is a little different. The energy expenditure and the amount of health benefits one gains depends on the intensity that they decide to do during the exercise. The greater the intensity, the greater the benefits. However, one is not required to have a high level of skill to increase the intensity. Even beginners can increase the intensity and gain a lot of benefits. Exercises would include swimming, dance aerobics, and hiking. The last group is health for the activities that require development of skill to increase the health benefits. Such activities would include organized sports such as flag football, basketball, tennis, volleyball, and many more. As one's skill develop, their intensity and effort increase, which results in increase in the heart rate and increase in one's overall health benefits of the activity. All right, guys, there you have it. I hope you now know that there is so much variety that cardiovascular exercise has to offer. If you put in a little research, I know y'all can find something that will suit you perfectly. When deciding on an exercise, you should consider certain factors. These things include the equipment needs of a sport, your overall fitness goals, if you have any ailments or diseases that may need special attention when engaging in this activity, and most importantly, whether or not you enjoy the activity. And before starting any new cardiovascular or workout plan, Check with your doctor to make sure the activity is safe for you. Thank you guys. Maintaining a healthy cardiovascular system isn't always easy for most people. As mentioned before, cardiovascular system or circulatory system is a system that moves blood throughout the human body. There are times when others can include an illness that involves the blood vessels which contain your veins, arteries, and capillaries, or the heart, or maybe even both. According to the National Health Service, some of the main risk factors to cardiovascular disease are hypertension or high blood pressure, hyperlipidemia or high blood cholesterol, smoking, lack of sleep, diabetes, unhealthy eating, alcohol consumption, and lack of physical activity, and many more. This is a problem in our society today because this type of disease is also considered one of the number one leading causes of death globally. Based off the World Health Organization, 80% of deaths of cardiovascular disease occur in low and middle income countries. There are many ways people can take action to help reduce the risk of getting cardiovascular disease. Eating healthier and increasing the amount of intake on healthy nutrients. Daily physical activity and losing weight helps keep you in shape and helps maintain that healthy body. From a research team at the University of California, San Francisco, they have reported in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology 
that eating fresh food every day can reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease by up to 40%. Sports performance and cardiovascular health are linked together according to the ACSM. Cardiovascular health contributes to the endurance and physical output of the person. As you practice and train your cardiovascular system to output more, you increase your performance in the game or day-to-day -day life. When you are in tip-top shape, you can last the entire game, and when it comes down to the game, you can win with the performance you put in and perform it flawlessly. To improve your cardiovascular health, you can use music while training to keep you on pace and motivated. For example, faster music that has a higher beat per minute can increase your cardiovascular health by training you at a faster tempo to output more as you go along. Also, it helps keep you motivated to push harder at training to increase your cardiovascular health. There are also ways to hurt your cardiovascular health by using drugs or PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. These drugs have very bad side effects on the body that many people overlook. These side effects to get the instant gratification or performance and looks for the now time. These side effects can put much more stress on the cardiovascular health. This stress can lead to strokes and heart attacks from increased load on blood vessels and the heart. Now we'll be talking about THR. THR stands for target heart rate. It is not only achieved from extreme exercises or over-exercising, but tells you how to hit the right heart rate. The Carbonin formula. This, fig this formula is to help you figure out your lower end of the training zone heart rate and the upper end of your training zone heart rate. This way you know where to hit that right target when you're exercising. The first thing to figure out is your resting heart rate. It's your post at rest. Your maximum heart rate is 220 subtracted by your age. Then your heart rate reserve is your maximum heart rate minus your resting heart rate. Then to find your heart rate reserve, you multiply that by 0.8 to get your upper end of the training zone. And then your heart rate reserve multiplied by 0.50 to get the lower end of your training zone. That way you know where to hit every time you exercise in between those two values.